Hi guys, Andy Dramatic Aquatics. And I thought what we would do this time, after many many years of experience with the inverted tank and lots and lots of experimentation, as I look on the mainstream media, we see that there's dams and reservoirs in trouble all across the world. Some have too much water, some have repairs that need done, some have no water at all. And I thought, how could we possibly help with this situation? So here we are. Let me introduce you to an idea which has been around for hundreds of years, but never thought of on quite a bigger scale, is what I'm thinking. And it is the equaliser. So, when you look at a reservoir, and this one, as you can see, is completely full. I know what you're thinking. That's not a very big reservoir. However, if I bang a few of these kicking about somewhere, now all of a sudden it just got bigger. So how can we sort this reservoir out and what is the equaliser? The inverted aquarium, it can absorb water, it can hold water, it can release water and I've even come up with a way of making it produce water. So here we go. If there's more water falls, the dam's going to go, let me show you. So we'll just add a little bit of water in there and you'll see, as soon as it starts flowing, the water's going to come over and burst the banks. And these guys need to do some repairs. And here comes the rain. Now, you can see it's flooding, and the whole town down river could be in a lot of problems. That's what would happen right now, however. Let me just switch that off for a moment. So as you can see, we're still overflowing here. So that would be a field reservoir. With the equaliser, who says it's full? What if we imagine that space has been completely empty and that is where we're going to start working from? Because the biggest pain in the backside with the inverted aquarium is that you keep running out of water. So if we take a problem and turn it into a solution, fix the world. So here we go. It looks full. A couple of feet. So, all this is, is a water tank, flipped upside down, maybe some extendable feet down at the bottom of the reservoir, and then simply remove the air and watch the level. And there we go, we've practically just drained half of this and there is no limit as to where you can go except height which is around about the 34 feet mark. After that the water starts to boil for some strange reason. So now you can see the levels dropped in here and we're nowhere near here. If we added more then we could physically drain the reservoir without removing the water if you had enough of them. So basically on top of the reservoir you can go at least another 30 feet on the entire surface which is crazy. 
Now for reservoirs that's drying out, how does this physically help? Because the bottom's open, what you do is you employ a man in a little boat, like an ice cream man. And he goes round, because if you're running out of water, we can safely assume that you're in a hot sort of area, the sun's shining, so you can put a solar panel on the top. When you put your solar panel on the top, it can then generate some ice which I'm not going to be able to squeeze in because it's too bloody big. And when the ice goes in at the bottom, because it's ice, it immediately wants to float. So because in there now, as that water starts to cool down, we're surrounded by water all of the time. We can't see it, but it is in the air. So the hotter the weather, the better the solar panel is going to work. The more the solar panel works, the more the inside freezes up. Maybe it's not blocks of ice, maybe it could just be giant lollipops. Now there we go, we'll leave that for five minutes, that'll cool down and start producing its own water when the warm air touches the device, whether it be metal, aluminium, glass, plastic. That'll be like a paint glass on a hot day, causing evaporation, causing condensation, then topping up the reservoir. Let's go and have a look again in five minutes. And there we go, it's been about 10 minutes. It's producing water. It's then filling up the reservoir again. Makes complete notice sense, doesn't it? So simple, yet so overlooked. So when you say you can only get a pint of water in a pint glass, no, you can't. Here's a tank which is 330 litres and it's only in a 98 litre pool. And that shows you can have more on the top than you've got underneath. Just using the top of the surface is the bottom of your storage area. How incredible is that? Make sure you subscribe and like if you think this is a great idea. Wait until you see the other ideas for kicking all of climate change's arse. Thanks for watching. Good night.